After the Lord showed me how common it was to fall into error and bias, I felt my mind was finally open enough to sincerely listen to my brother's concerns and with the Lord's help bring him back to the church. But Duane didn't leave simply because of bias. Most of us are Latter-day Saints because we know something that outsiders do not know. We have experienced something unique. I began to read the Book of Mormon and pray to know for myself. And it was a simple prayer. And as I'm having the feelings now, I had the same feelings then. It made me cry. I was crying and I didn't know why. But there was this wonderful feeling that had come over me. And it was very clear to me. Uh, God was saying, it's true. At the end of the Book of Mormon, Moroni promises that we can all read the book and ask Heavenly Father to know whether or not it is true. This model made so much sense to me. We, as children of God, were unable to determine the truth on our own, so Heavenly Father provided a way for us so that we may know the truth. The method was easy, to simply ask our all-knowing Creator in faith, and He promised to answer by the power of the Holy Ghost. Through this method, we may know the truth of all things, learn the correct path, and be guided to return to live with our Heavenly Father. I had tried this method for myself. After carefully reading the Book of Mormon, I prayerfully asked God to know whether or not it was true, and I too experienced the Holy Ghost, which confirmed that the Church was true. My brother Duane also had this experience. I knew he was a man of faith, sincerity, and integrity, so what went wrong? Why did he leave? The problem was, he came across a second Nephite record. I found an archive called the Mantina Archives, and contained within it was a book called the Book of Haggath, and it felt whole and building, and it testified of Jesus Christ. It says in the, in the preface that I should ask God if it's from Him, pray about it, and He would tell me if it's true. I prayed about it, and I um, received a confirmatory feeling, just like I had felt with the Book of Mormon, that the Book of Haggai is good and true and valuable, just like the Book of Mormon. I couldn't distinguish that feeling from anything else that I had felt previously. It was a spiritual confirmation. And I remember kneeling down in my living room and just um, crying. The problem was, this record turned out to be false, a complete fraud. So, in my brother's eyes, he felt his spiritual experience had let him down but he had the same experience with the Book of Mormon. So how could he know which prompting was of God and which prompting was not? I took some time to ponder his question. If Moroni's promise was not true, what other model could possibly make sense and fit all of the experiences I had and many others? The best alternative model I could come up with was that perhaps people were asking themselves a question and an unconscious part of the brain was capable of generating its own response in the form of a powerful spiritual experience. So I asked myself the next question. Which of these two models were actually correct? It seemed likely that only one of these models could turn out to be true. I didn't want to doubt my spiritual experiences because I felt it would be like betraying God. But if somehow these experiences were not from God, then surely I would be better off knowing the truth so that I could be guided towards further light and knowledge. If this alternative model were correct, things would look very strange. It would predict a number of things. It would mean that our minds are much more mysterious and far more powerful than I had ever imagined. And the world would be very odd because it predicts that people would receive differing spiritual experiences that would point them in all sorts of opposing directions. Because spiritual experiences have such a powerful effect on the mind and heart, it would be very confusing when opposing experiences find each other. For example, if a Catholic had an experience that told him his church was God's only true church, it would be very confusing to meet a Latter-day Saint who had a similar experience that pointed him in a different direction. Because both could not be right, the Catholic would be tempted to invalidate the Latter-day Saint experience. If each sect applied this logic, it would only create discord and serve to trap each one further in their worldview. I wondered if there was any evidence in support of this alternative model. There was an LDS breakoff group that I was curious about, so after some effort, I got a hold of one of the apostles of this church. What he said floored me. He had experienced the same thing I had, 
a revelation from God that confirmed to him that his church was the only true church. I investigated another LDS breakoff group and came across this recording. I've been searching for, for a witness of this work and of this church and, and just tonight, I got my witness. And it's burning within my soul of how important this work is and how true it is. I know it is. And it's hard to believe that just a year ago I was in high school and now I'm in a plural marriage and struggling. But I know without a shadow of a doubt that this is the Lord's work, that I have finally found it. I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I wondered if people of vastly different beliefs were also experiencing the same things. So I looked into Islam. Here are only a few examples of what I found. I'm making a supplication, Allah help me, guide me, guide me to the truth. If you guide me to the truth, I'll never leave it. And I knew in my heart, Allah was telling me in my heart that Islam, this is, this, this is true, you know. And I knew right there it was the correct religion. And at that point, I had this feeling of, um, of just peace. Just, uh, that's how I describe it, like peace with everywhere, within me, the outside. <laughs> it gets me a bit now, but I had this, it was a completely different feeling for me. And, and, and it's changed my life since that day, and, and, I, and I've never looked back since. It came with such clarity and such power that I could understand it as nothing else but uh, an invitation from God. In fact, she says it was Jesus himself who led her to Islam. I started praying to really to find the truth. It didn't take a long time to, to find out that Islam is the truth and that there can't be any other religion in the world. I could not stop reading it. Um, it was like feeding, feeding me, you know. Um, that's when I knew that I, was, I wanted to become Muslim. And I said, please, God, you are the one who listens, who always listens. Please, who do I have to follow to come to you direct? Christianity or the Muslim? I was 100% sure that God has answered my question. What is the right way, the only right way to come to God? Islam. People really were having spiritual experiences that pointed them in random directions. But what scared me the most is that these spiritual experiences served as powerful adhesives, attaching people ever more firmly to their respective groups, making it difficult for them to leave or to change their mind. I wondered if these experiences could be used abusively to manipulate or control people. A.J. Miller is a modern messiah. He believes he is Jesus. Could he get his followers to have a spiritual experience and dedicate their lives to him? Whose devoted disciples believe he walked this earth 2,000 years ago. How did A.J. convince his followers? There is a general process that God designed that allows us to discover what is truth and what is not. And the process would be, ask this God to receive the love and then feel about that particular thing. And if that particular thing turns off the flow, I know it's not true. And if that particular thing stays flowing, then I know it's true. Did this method actually work on AJ's followers? Tell me about AJ. Who is he? <laughs> Whenever I think about him now, I just cry. I'm starting to have a, a soul, like an emotional realization of who he is. It's just it's overwhelming. How far could it go? Here's the most extreme example I came across. Please be warned, the following clip is very disturbing. 
What happened to that individual on the cross beside Jesus who believed and Jesus said, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. He knew that he seriously believed and that he knew that's all that it took is for him to believe who he was. Even believing him in a condition when he was being killed as a heretic. Who was this man? We're going to begin tonight with the strange suicide of the 39. It was as bizarre as it was shocking. 39 members of the Heaven's Gate cult dead from an overdose of vodka and phenobarbital. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. The group's leader, Marshall Applewhite, also known as Doe, left behind a rambling videotape statement that tried to explain what he and his followers had done. They believed that he was basically an alien being who had been Jesus 2,000 years ago, who had come to Earth to find the other aliens that had been on Earth to evacuate before Earth was destroyed. This was a tragic loss of life. Why did these 39 people believe that Applewhite was the true Messiah? What convinced them that his message was true? Let's take a look at the method he used to convince his followers that he was the true Messiah. At least ponder this, that you go into the privacy of your closet. Don't ask your neighbors, your friends, what they think of this. You go see if you can connect with the purest, highest source that you might consider God and say, what about this? Is this for real? We hope that your thoughts will be of our Father's kingdom. Thank you. What did his followers experience? And I knew, my soul knew, that um, it had what I'd been searching for a, a long time, and um, I knew it even before I read it. When I got those statements, I just couldn't stop reading because I knew. And ever since I've been in the class, there's never been a doubt. Like when I was first met them, I knew that I, what they had to say was true. It wasn't something they said, it was something that I knew inside me. I felt uh, it was like a recognition. It was instant recognition for me, and there was never a doubt in my mind. I just wish that people out there could understand how much we feel and know this is real. This is not a fantasy. I know. I didn't have to believe. I knew. When I prayed to know if the Book of Mormon was true, I received a spiritual confirmation. But I didn't know any of this. I was shocked to find so many similar experiences on YouTube. I encourage you to explore on your own and post your findings here. I always thought my spiritual experience was somehow unique. Nobody ever told me that it was common to so many other religions. So I added this pillar to the other theory. If Heavenly Father is using this method to guide his children, why was it leading so many people astray? So I prayed to my Heavenly Father for help. How can we know which promptings are from God and which promptings are from ourselves?